In today's video, I'm going to show you how to draw a house. So I'm going to give you 10 easy tips that are going to enable you to put any house or small size building effectively into your landscape drawing or painting. Welcome back to my channel. If we haven't met before, my name is Michelle and on this channel you'll find art tips and techniques, particularly watercolour painting and colour mixing, and you'll also find business and social media training for artists, so please do consider subscribing. If you press the little bell notification, you'll get notified every time I have a new video for you. So in a minute I'm going to point the camera down and we'll go through how to draw a house, but we're going to have 10 tips and these are designed to be sort of broad tips so that whatever sort of house, because houses vary don't they, whatever sort of house you happen to come across, big or small, you know, single story, two story, when you find a house or a building you want to place it in your landscapes, this is going to just give you those tips that enable you to have a really basic understanding of perspective. Now I know perspective is a really scary word, everybody goes oh my goodness maths, but we're not going to be doing any maths, I'm just going to give you some real, real simple techniques that are going to help you to um, stop worrying about putting buildings in your landscapes. Now the first thing to understand is that things get smaller as they go into the distance. Now I know that you already know this, it's, a, it's an optical illusion isn't it? If you have a row of fence posts and they're evenly spaced and even height then they will appear to get smaller as they go into the distance but of course if you actually walked up to them they wouldn't be smaller at all. So this is something that the lenses in our eyes do and if you drew a parallel line, so if you drew parallel lines um, along the top of the fence post and the base of the fence post then eventually those parallel lines would converge and they would meet in a point that would be level with your eye line. Now this is something that's really important to remember so if things get smaller into the distance it's going to help us with drawing our house. Now tip number two sounds really simple but it's so important to bear in mind when you're drawing houses because I see people draw angles the wrong way around all the time. So what I want you to think of is a wall. So you're standing and there's a wall really close to you just a few inches away from your face. Now can you see the top of the wall? So can you see the flat edge, the top bricks of the wall? Chances are if the wall is higher than you, you can't see the top of it, can you? Now what point, um, if the wall was to, uh, to gradually decrease in size, at what point can you see the top of the wall? You can see the top of the wall when it becomes lower than your eye line. Now if the wall was um, not attached to the ground, if it was floating like some kind of sci-fi movie, at what point would you be able to see the bottom of the wall? So the underneath face of the bricks at the bottom, at what point would you be able to see them? Imagining that wall's floating up in front of you, you would be able to see underneath as it passed your eye line. So it's really important to remember that you can only see the top of objects if they're below your eye line and you can only see the underneath of objects if they're above your eye line. So all will become clear in a minute but that is also going to help you with drawing houses. Now tip number three is a simplification really so it's not necessarily mathematically correct but when you're drawing houses and I mean um, a house that's sort of just you know the usual one or two story house or a tiny house that's in the distance in your landscape. I want you to keep your verticals upright, you know, 90 degrees from the ground. Only worry about the horizontal lines, those are the ones that change. Now there is something called three point perspective and four point perspective that affects very tall buildings whereupon the sides will appear to converge. However, for ordinary size houses, it's not really something that you need to worry about or something that's overly noticeable. So I want you to keep your uprights upright and only worry about your horizontal lines moving around. So in a second I'm going to point my uh, camera downwards so you can see my drawing board and we're going to draw that house. But the last tip before I do that, tip number four, is don't use a ruler. Now this isn't an exact rule. I have sometimes used a ruler to straighten up one line or used a T-square to see if something is, um, is at 90 degrees. But you don't want to draw your whole house with a ruler. Now the reason for this is that if you put perfect lines, and a ruler drawn line is a perfect line, if you put perfect lines on your house, then you literally have to get everything else perfect. You've got no leeway for it being, you know, a bit sketchy or a bit painterly. You have absolutely no leeway. You are setting yourself up for disappointment and for disappointing the viewer because put a perfect line in your painting, um, there were still many, many perfect lines, and you're gonna have to have those angles spot onto the degree otherwise it's really going to notice. So don't make a rod or a ruler for your own back, leave the ruler out of your drawing. 
So we're looking down at my drawing board now and I want you to understand at this point that what I'm drawing for you today is just some rough sketches. You're going to see all the scribbles, all the workings out and all the guidelines. It's to help you with your own drawings, it's not to draw a, uh, a beautiful building. So what I'm going to do first of all is put my central corner of the house line in. So this is the corner of the house that is closest to me. And tip number five is to draw the house itself without the roof. So you don't want to worry about roofs. They really do come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. And although they broadly, of course, follow the, uh, the idea of perspective, they can be a little bit confusing. If you try and draw your house going round the roof, then you're going to get in trouble. So what I want you to do is to draw your house as a simple box, or oblong or cube. And so here we are. Remember how the uprights are staying upright and the horizontal lines are the only things that move. So there we are. We've got a simple oblong shape. So you can see now that I've drawn a few more lines on and I've highlighted these corners. These corners are so important. I often see these people getting these the wrong way round. Now for an average size house where you are standing on the ground, the bottom corner is always going to point downwards and the top corner is always going to point upwards. Now remember I said if you were above something you could see it. Well obviously this is not a transparent item but if the house were transparent you'd be able to see the base wouldn't you? You'd be able to see the floor something like that. So you're above that so your eye line is about a third quarter of the way up the building and you can see the base. The only reason you wouldn't be able to see it in real life is because the house is not transparent. So tip number six is to understand that these lines will eventually reach a vanishing point along your eye line. There'll be one over here and one over here. This is called two point perspective. You do not have to plot this, you do not have to work it out or worry about it. As long as you know what these lines are supposed to do, then you can just get a rough approximation of it. Often you will find that the vanishing point is off the edge of your work in any case. So there's no, there's no real easy way to work it out and there's no need to work it out. But if you understand that those converge along these two vanishing points, then that's going to be a big help to you. You'll also notice that the um, angles are not even one side to the other and that's because we're not standing evenly in the centre of the house or perhaps the house is um, different widths on either side. So the angles there you can just judge them by eye but just remember that eventually they're going to meet along that eye line so if you can get a rough idea in a picture of where your eye line is that's going to be really helpful to you and remember the bit about the corners. This is going to be really important when I show you in a minute how to do houses that are above your eye line and houses that are below your eye line. Tip number seven is that center points move across to one side. So imagine this side of this house here. Let's take that eye line out just to uh, avoid confusing us a little bit so it looks more like a house. Imagine there's something in the center of this wall. The mistake that people often make is to measure halfway between here and here or halfway between here and here. But the truth is that you've still got perspective going on things are getting smaller into the distance, which means that if you divide this in half, you will see more of this half than this half. So in terms of perspective, even if facing this wall there were a, a door dead center in the, in, the, uh, in the wall of the house, it's going to shift over that way. So here we are, we've put our line over to one side and we can put our doorway in. Same goes for this side. Again, things get smaller as they go away. So rather than being dead in the middle here, your center line is going to shift across slightly. So the center line is going to be something like this. That goes for if you've got a dead central point of the roof, anything that's in the middle of your house is going to shift over to one side. And remember with the doors as well, you can still keep the uprights upright. It's a very handy house isn't it? It's got two entranceways. So remember that your center points will move across. 
Tip number eight is to remember that all other horizontal lines also follow the, uh, the vanishing point. So if we have a, uh, a roof here, then it's also going to do something like that and that will eventually also hit the vanishing point. I'm going to move that up a bit there. Okay, and then it would be the same on this side. So again, these angles are going to be steeper here. And you may get something on that side more like that. Now you'll notice that these angles don't remain the same. They get gradually shallower as they reach the eye line and then they start to go the other way. Now this is important when it comes to things like windows. So if you had a row of windows along here, often what people do is they line the tops of the windows up with the roof line. Sometimes they line them up with the base. They're not quite sure where to line them up and the truth is that neither is right. The windows will also have their own lines of perspective and you can draw a rough guideline so you know that these angles are going to change gradually like this. So you can roughly plot a guideline for your windows. So knowing that everything is going to end up going to that eye line vanishing point and that the angles are going to get shallower as they come down to the eye line and then they're going to start going the other way, you can now plot your windows. So there you've got two guidelines for the tops of your windows. Now what you'll find is that not only do things get smaller into the distance, they get narrower, fainter and closer together. So let's put some windows in. Okay, So we start with them fairly large. Remember we're keeping the uprights upright so that's easy and then we're just using these guidelines for the horizontal lines. Let's put another one in. I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller. And again, let's have another one. Not only make it smaller, but making the gap between the windows smaller. Okay, there we go. And let's fit one more in. Again, the gap smaller and the window itself smaller. And in this way, you'll get your window perspective correct. So I've moved my drawing board across and um, this is how I sometimes see beginners drawing chimneys. Now what's the problem with this? It doesn't work, does it? It looks like the back's missing. So if we can do this, then logically we can fill this in to make it into a, a proper square, can't we? Okay, so now we can see the top of the chimney. Now, do you remember at the beginning I said to you that you only see the top of an object once it goes below your eye line? So if you can see the top of this chimney, then you are now a bird flying in the sky. See, this is what a good artist I am. I can even draw birds. Okay, so you're now looking down at the chimney. So this, if you're drawing it up on a house that you're looking up at, this angle here going down and down is wrong. So moving back to our house, let's put a chimney on it. And we're going to remember that because we're looking up, that central corner must be go up like this, not down like this, because we're not a bird in the sky, we're standing on the ground. So this corner is above our eye line, and just like this one, it must go up. So tip number nine is that if you're above a house, this changes. So if you're above a house, then both of these corners are going to point down. So let's draw that and see what happens. So I'm now going to point both corners of the central line, the central corner, down. Again, the angles won't be even. They'll be coming up to an eye line somewhere up here. Right, let's keep the verticals vertical just like before and we're going to do something like this. 
So here we've got our eye line right up high. And you can see that again, I'm going to keep my uprights upright. As I said, there is a, you know, there is another type of perspective that can affect those. But when you're learning, probably easiest to keep it simple for now. Keep your uprights upright. And then all of these other lines are going towards the eye line, which is now high. So we are looking down at the building, which means that these two corners here are now pointing down. I've put the roof on, but initially, as I said, it's just a square box. And you can see how effective it looks that we're now looking down at that building. So tip number 10, and the opposite is also true. If we're looking up at the building because it's above us, maybe it's up on a hill, then these two top corners are now going to point upwards. So let's draw that. So here the eye line is much lower. And again, keeping those verticals upright although if you were if you had a very tall building they would converge in a little bit here and then all of the lines including the roof line are going to come down to those two vanishing points so again these two central lines are going upwards because we're looking upwards so if you remember down for down up for up so if you remember when we were street level, the top one went up because we're looking up at it and the bottom one went down because we're looking down at it. But this building now, we're looking up at it. Now, of course, technically you'd be able to see the underneath of the building, but since buildings can't fly, we'll imagine that this is possibly sitting on a hill or a mountain top. There we go. So if we take out the construction lines, and for this one too. So now you've got a house viewed from above, a house viewed from below, and of course with this one here, you've got your house viewed from street level. Again, you don't have to plot all of these vanishing points and all of these lines, but if you can remember these broad principles, and remember that corners that you look up at have to point upwards and corners that you look down at, these central corners, have to point downwards. Then you're going to go a lot further on with your house drawing and everything's going to look a lot more realistic when you place them in your landscapes. So let me know in the comments if you love drawing buildings or if perspective haunts your worst nightmares and if this has been of a little bit of help to you. And please do click the like button and share and subscribe. You can watch another one of my videos right now.